and we're off for the second running of the Fortitude 10K here in Fort Collins. Uh, Frank should be a fun should be a fun event. We've got uh, about eight people from the in the top group from last year. We'll get some numbers uh, as we progress down the road. But uh, I I think that the the race itself in this A wave could be very competitive uh, compared to. Um, to last year where it was there was a, only a, a couple guys who ran away with it so this year I think it's going to be a little more competitive so we'll uh, we'll get you the the numbers here in in a s one second we've got number 99 uh, 127 56 and 110 so uh, number 99 is is uh, give me one second thank you Tim Cronin this is Frank Shorter, and they're in the first mile. One thing to point out about this course is there's an 80-foot difference in elevation. It's flat. It's a wonderful course. If you're going to run at altitude, have it be a flat course. So now we'll get the splits and see how fast he's going out. Last year, they went out, oh, in about 520 for the first mile. And uh, I think he's going a little faster than that. So we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. We've got Roy Schulte is uh, number 99, and and uh, Andrew Epperson is number 127, and number 56 is John Pentland, and number 110, and who is in that, uh, at least in that lead group, um, as we got started, was uh, that is Seth Woodring. So that if that. If we can read the number, 127, that's Andrew Epperson from Fort Collins, so he knows the course. And I would bet Colorado State student. So, Frank, you've run this course a, a number of times, uh, sort of in it and out of it since uh, you had a place up here for a while. So how do you like this course? It, it's, like I said, it's flat. That's what you want. And the other thing is there are enough corners on this course that if you can get ahead, you can kind of get out of sight here. And he's, he's heading on uh, Elizabeth Street, heading west on the west side of the campus. And at, at about the one and a half, two mile mark, they're going to go right by where my daughter spent seven years when she was here at CSU as an undergrad and then in the veterinary school. So I know I've, I've run on all these streets. So this first left turn that they just took was uh, off of Elizabeth and onto Constitution Avenue, and then they're going to swing right onto Springfield Drive. And uh, all that will happen before we get to mile one. He's, he's got about a 10-second lead already. Well, he's decided to do it, and we'll just see. He Actually, looks good. good. He, <laughs> he looks fine. So it, it, it's hard to tell at this point. It, it really is, and, and we really do have to wait for that uh, first mile split. Well, the interesting thing, once you get past that, that first mile and before you get to mile two, um, which is somewhere around 2K, um, the, uh, the, the peak of the course will occur. As you said, it's 80 feet above the start line. And then uh, it's all downhill back here to us at Canvas Stadium. And uh, the, the stadium is beautiful. It's a great day. The, uh, the weather couldn't have been much better, Frank, for, for the race today. It's, it's overcast and cool. And, and uh, if you and I were running, this would be perfect weather. It's what I call no excuses. If you don't run as well as you wanted to on a day like today, uh, you can't blame the weather. And, and this race, because of the wave start, will have, it'll take about 40 minutes to get everybody launched onto the course. I'm really anxious to see what he's, what he's going to be at the mile mark. We're 4.13, 4.14 into it right now, so in about 30 seconds we'll know. And if he's under five minutes, he's really going out fast. Well, last year the, uh, the winner, or the, the leaders went out about 5.11. Uh, for the first mile, and, and the guy that went out in 5.11 ended up being second place. Uh, Michael Chavez from last year ran out in 5.24 and ended up uh, with, the, with the fastest time. So it, it's, there's two different ways you can run this. You can go out as, as Andrew uh, Epperson has and, and just take him in from the, from the gun, and it doesn't seem like anybody's going to challenge him, at least at this point. <clears throat> 
probably once we get up around two miles, we will see the truck drop back and, and pick up some of, the, some of the racing from behind. 4.55 for the first mile. So he is 15 seconds faster over the first mile than they were last year. And 4.55, he's going to come in. Uh, that would be 30-30 pace. And to give you some perspective, 30-30 pace is uh, the pace that the last of the men's elite field is going to go out at the predicted pace. 30 minutes flat is the predicted pace for the last, the scratch runners to go off. So he's, he, he would be, if he could keep this up, he would actually be competitive in the men's elite field. Yeah, so um, the, the official mark was uh, 505 at the first mile, which is, that's good. That's a great start. He now, I, I forget here, there's a five-second delay. Right. So the watch that I have, he's, he's five seconds. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is, the, the idea of the wave start is that, is that in groups of about 200, everybody gets an equal chance. There's, you're not going to have a lot of people in front of you. You get right to the line. And that wave start was really um, perfected by, by the, uh, the people that put on this race. So he just took this first left and looks like headed up Skyline. <coughs> and Skyline will be about where the uh, big rise, the big, <laughs> the big rise, the big 80 foot rise will, will occur. So he's going to gain most of that elevation of 80 feet in this 300 meter stretch. So Frank, if you're back in the pack, which is like 20 seconds back, what are you thinking? Hoping he dies or you're, you're hoping he dies. At, at this point, that's quite a lead. It really is. And in that pack behind, very often, no one really wants to go chasing him because everyone can draft off you if you're the one that goes out first to try to close the gap. So at a certain point, I think someone is going to bolt from that second group and, and try to catch him. You can see he's going up a little rise here, but uh, that's it. That's it for the hills. So Andrew Epperson is an assistant track and cross country coach, actually, up here at, uh, at CSU, uh, recently added to the team um, in uh, 2017. And he became that assistant coach, helping out the cross country and the track team to the, uh, their, they uh, helped them to, to get to their first ever, you know, excellent start in the, uh, in the NCAAs last year. And now, right when he comes to the... I, I just have to point out how I do know the course here. Very soon he's going to go past a street where if he were to turn right in 100 feet, he would uh, be right at my daughter's house. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. One of the things about this is the, uh, the Colorado State cross country, the head coach, Art Seamers, uh, he had coached Andrew for three years at Colorado School of Mines, and that's when he hired him. He hired him based on, on what he knew about his work ethic and his ability to... Uh, to help others to perform. He's got, he was a great academics guy as well, one of the best engineering uh, students that, that they had, and decided that he would, uh, he would, he would look into him to be the coach, because he'd be the kind of guy he'd want as a role model. He knows how to run, knows how to work, knows how to be disciplined. Well, someone has made, made a break from that second group and is, is going after him. So now it's just a matter of looking at the splits, just looking at those splits. But he's got really a, a really big lead at this point. So uh, that's uh, number 110. Um, so it's 110, 105, and 39. So number, so number 110 will be... Um, give you that one second. Seth Woodring. Seth Woodring. Seth Woodring, uh, number 105, and that uh, who's far, not far behind um, is Sophie Blake. I'm not sure that's correct. And number 39, uh, also who's who's at least made a bit of a break. There's there the race itself is going to come un, undo, undone here. Um, so as we as we look at at the racing here, Frank, is this the point where you just kind of try to get somebody to run with and and try to pick up the pick up the leaders along the way? Yeah, those two will run together. When, and when it is two and you're trying to chase someone down, you instinctively let one lead a little bit and then the other. 
And in that kind of situation, they should actually be a little closer together, the two that we see uh, ahead there. You're right off someone's shoulder, and you can actually get about a, a almost a 10% energy saving if you run closely enough, but not so close that you lock arms or legs. Number 93, Joshua Mirth. He's a, he's a name we've heard before. He's run the Boulder Boulder a few years ago and run it well. And then uh, number number 100 in this is uh, McLean Drez. McLean Drez. Yeah, they're winding through the neighborhoods. They're heading north towards City Park. In the City it, Park it, loop, it, that loop around the park is beautiful. It's, oh, it's fun. It's fun. It's a nice, easy, easy curve. And uh, but I'll tell you, um, you don't really notice the lake when you're racing. <laughs> you're you're looking and and you're trying to gauge and and you hope that you're at least hanging on to that that person who's ahead of you. But I'm I'm really almost going out on a limb here because Andrew Epperson looks so good at this point. I I would be very surprised if he gets caught. And when you look at this runner, um, one of the things I notice sometimes with, with runners, Frank, you can see he carries his right shoulder underneath his left, and so he's not going to run with his weight equally distributed from, from left to right. Even though his foot plant looks good, you're going you're gonna to have a bit of a... One of the, your legs is going to be more tired at the end. And, and if you don't know the course, and I'm guessing he doesn't, that the guys in the truck have waved him over to run more of the tangents on this course. Yeah, you always want to know the course. You always go over the course. Another wave getting ready to go. These waves grow. It, it, it really is, you know, the, the competition within waves, and a lot of people sign up and try to get in the same wave as all their friends, and there is a Rams wave today as well, so that the uh, those who are CSU um, supporters can all run together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess there'll be a uh, propensity of green and or gold in that wave. What a great day. It's just perfect. You look at the flags here in the stadium and, and they're just uh, they're just flat. <laughs> and we didn't mention Canvas Stadium and Sunny Lubick Field. And that's uh, that's where we are. Okay, so this group that we've got here, we've got uh, number 126 is Travis Massey. 126 is Travis Massey. Uh, 110, who we've uh, we've talked about, that said Woodridge. Uh, 104, uh, who who has run well th this whole time. Number number 104 is uh, Brandon White. Uh, number 93, also uh, also performing quite well here, is is Joshua Murth. And Joshua Murth, I I, I know that. Because he has he has the knowledge of running some of these Boulder Boulder races, I think he was from uh, from Western State College, but I'm going to think that he's going to try to push the pace in the second half. Once you get back up on Mountain Avenue, it's a really long downhill, slightly downhill. There, now they're in the park, heading around <laughs> the lake. I asked one of the runners last year how he liked all the entertainment on the course. Uh, one of the guys from the A Wave, and he said. Was there entertainment on the course? <laughs> and and as you focus, you just really don't hear that. I think that those the people that are in the in the subsequent waves are probably going to hear that more than than some of the other people will hear. Now we'll have to see if we can uh, see our leader go beyond another mile marker, so we can get some idea of how how fast he's going. And here we go. Now it's parents and children. And you know, we're very close in this year of running where you're gonna start having grandparents and grandchildren and maybe even someday great-grandparent and great-grandchild running in the race together. Well, I think you've got some grandchildren waiting for you when you get back to Boulder, don't <laughs> That's you? That's right. <laughs> so this is, uh, looks like we're back at the, at, with the leader that, who, would, who would be, um, Andrew Epperson. No, I think this is still Seth Woodring. I think this is second and third. Ah, uh, you're right. It is second, third, fourth. 
And one thing you looked, it's a good shot of, of his legs. That's, uh, that's number 110. That's Seth Woodring, exactly. And what you look at is good runners are going to land sort of on their forefoot to the outside of their forefoot as they go and have good knee lift as they're coming through. His arm carry is pretty good, although his right arm does cross his body more than the left, which isn't unusual. Everybody has some quirks. My friend Frank Shorty used to have a right arm that, that would do a bit of a circular motion when you ran. Well, the story there is that I ran to and from school starting when I was about 10 and didn't have a backpack. Backpacks weren't really that common, and I would carry all my books in my left <laughs> hand. <laughs> That's a great story. No, and, it, and it's true. But if you're looking to uh, figure out what good form looks like, Seth looks pretty good now. He's just gone He's past. getting caught. Brandon White is coming back on him. Brandon White has really pressed it a little. That's a great shot. Everybody across. And no one has to worry about the wind today, so they, they can all go. They don't bunch up behind anyone and just... And, even within the first mile, people will tell you in these kind of races, and by mile two, you start to recognize people around you. People are going in your wave just about the same speed, and you, you kind of get into their rhythm, and, and it really does help. It, it, it helps you along. Just got word from the uh, press truck that uh, they've, they've um, left uh, they're past Seth, mile three now. Seth behind, and they're moving, they're moving back up towards the leaders. <clears throat> One of our communications tools is uh, text messaging from the lead vehicle so that, so that we're always up to date on what's going on. And, and uh, for me, it's a special shout out to my daughter, Erin, for, for providing us with all this information. It's always fun to get to work with somebody that you know pretty damn well when you get to get, come on these races. And, and Frank, you and I have had the uh, privilege of doing this together since 1984. I didn't even know how long it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to. And, uh, you know, in the future, I look forward to jumping in one of the early waves, uh, maybe even here, if we could uh, do it that way and come back and have someone else help you with this part of it. And I could then help out with the elite field. Now, it does look like we've gotten back to the leader at this point. That's uh, Andrew. And that is a, that is a massive lead. And I'll he's, try to see. He's running. He's got to be running around Mountain Avenue now. <clears throat> yeah, he's about three and a half miles. Now his form looks pretty good. He carries his right hand. He dr he drops his right hand a little below his his uh, his hip. And again, everybody's got an idiosyncrasy. But the thing you look for is he's very erect. He stands very tall, and his and his. Uh, his knee lift and his foot plant are excellent. And on these roads, you're going to run toward, more towards the center, and then you're going to take this turn. Um, is he all the way over to, to uh, Noise already? Or to House? I'll ask. No, I, th I think he, there's a little place where you make this jog for a block south and come back north on Mountain Avenue, and he may be in that point right now. Yeah, we do take a little jog on Shields and then across Oak and then back up Mac. Mac. Yeah. Um. All right, now the, the waves that are having fun are out there. Now, and I've always noticed this when in these kind of races, the further back you go in the waves, the bigger the smiles get <laughs> when they start out and when they finish. It's a great overhead shot of, of City Park. So we just got a call from the, uh, from the press truck wanting to know who that is, <laughs> who's leading. So sometimes the communication has to go both ways. So Andrew Epperson is, uh, I think he's making his, uh, his team proud. Looks good. Looks really good. I think the phrase, it's over, is maybe apropos at this point. Right. right. No, very light on his feet. Very light on his feet. And as you were pointing out, he lands on his forefoot. And I'm not sure his 
heel does anything but just touch the ground lightly and come up, and that's what you want to see. 19, 20 minutes even. He has been five-minute five pace. Yeah. Right on five-minute pace. So, and, and I think the thing we talked about yesterday, Frank, is if you're going to run this race, it, having a pace in mind and being able to execute your plan is the way to, to have success on this course. And even if he weren't an engineer, um, he would have been smart enough to run this course many times, and they know where the mile marks are. He's trained on this. He has the advantage of having trained and maybe even have done what we call interval miles and go hard for a mile, um, jog for a little bit, get to a next mile marker, go hard for the mile. And he's probably even done that kind of training on this course. Yeah. And it, it's a good course to be able to do, um, you know, what you, what you used to talk about, in and outs and, and surging, and because and races don't go even pace all the way. No, he's well within himself. I wonder where his team is stationed, <laughs> cheering him. Maybe, Hopefully probably. they're manning an aid station at five miles or something. Right. I want to give a special thanks to uh, Eric Poloni, who's our, uh, who's our man of magic here, to be able to make everything happen here at uh, Canvas Stadium, Sun Sunny Lubeck Field. It's a beautiful stadium, i got to tell you. This is a really outstanding venue to have a, to have a race. And you had mentioned and pointed out that when they turn that last corner... That's right. When, when they come down and they're running down Meridian... South, into the stadium. You can see this big TV that we're getting to watch for about a whole kilometer, which is a little over a half a mile. So when he, he's going to make a um, he's going to make a right turn up here um, and head south on Howes Avenue, and when he does that, it's not going to be too far before he gets to five miles. And I think if he's still on five minute pace, I'll be very impressed. Although this is a, this is a nice long downhill stretch, and you, so you can relax and maintain your pace a little easier than you can uh, if we run this the other direction. I want to ask him why he didn't jump in the elite field here. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <too. laughs> well, maybe we can grab him they for a let quick him in. interview. Yeah. You would have let him in. We would have let him in, absolutely. Don Janicki put together a great field. You get to see that later. Um, the, uh, the handicap process uh, to, uh, to be able to do this and based on how people run and, and what they've done. Now he's made that right turn. Now he's, now he's headed south on Howes Avenue. So he's going to be at about 8K here pretty shortly. 8K and 5 miles are, are pretty close together. He's just having fun. I don't think he's looked around either. Uh, and that's... But you always tell your athletes when you're a coach, don't look behind. He didn't look once. He hasn't looked once. He hasn't looked from the start. He had a plan in mind and came out to execute his plan. And I think it, for him, it was a question of, if you want to beat me, you're going to have to run with me, and you're going to have to take it from me. I haven't seen too many costumes, Frank. I don't... Nope. Well, he's just at a different level of fitness than any of the others. He's, he's getting a little tired, which is what you want to see. I mean, if, if you look closely, you can tell because all the elite athletes, and he's an elite athlete, you, you learn when you're running in a pack to sort of observe other people and just out of the corner of your eye, and you can kind of sense when they're getting tired. So he's getting a little bit tired. Well, the thing that I noticed is that his knee lift was so good in those first two, two and a half miles, and it's just, it's a little lower. It's not, his, no. which affects his stride length maybe an inch. But, uh, so I'm going to guess that when he comes through five miles, I'm going to think he's just a little slower than he's been in those previous because he, he came through four miles in exactly 20 minutes. But I think there's a very good chance his fastest mile is still going to be his last. 
because then you, when you get within about three minutes of the finish, you can start going anaerobic, as we say, not getting enough oxygen, because if you're as well trained as he is, you can, you can tolerate that for about three minutes. And, and so you can actually speed up if you're really, really fit and you've been running within yourself um, until that last three minutes, which I think he obviously has. So let's see. He's run, he's run a solid race. He's, uh, We're know, at five miles now. Definitely a worthy champ. I think we missed he, the five-mile That was mile actually, mark. I'm going to take back everything I said. That was a 453 split. <laughs> Came okay. under. Yep. Yep. Maybe that's why it looks like he, he was working a little harder. Yeah, maybe that's it. You're right. He decided he wasn't going to have to wait for... Uh, now he's for turned on turn. Laurel. And this is a really pretty part of the course. I mean, the, the whole course is pretty, and, and the thing about it is there's a tremendous amount of shade. Even if it's a really sunny day, you can, you can run the shade all the way. Um, you can see him hugging the left side of the road because early in the morning the shade's going to be from that side. A little later, he, he, you might be a, a little on the other side where the, where the sun's more overhead. But on Laurel, he's going to make one more big left turn coming down Meridian. And, uh, and he realizes he's going to make that left turn, so he's more over on the left side of the road and then just gradually working his way over again, which shows if you do it that way, you actually save a little distance. So he'll very subtly start working his way over on the, to the left side of the road. And the nice thing about this street is with the markings, you can do that. You can go from, see, he just is working a little bit over into the next lane to the left because he's about halfway through this stretch. It's about a half a mile long. It's actually a kilometer which is a little more than half a mile, and he'll gradually work over and get closer and closer to the bike lane. You don't do it all at once. Again, it's sort of a variation on the running the tangent, and right. he is running a tangent. It's just a very, very long one. The other thing I noticed, Frank, and when we come back to that shot that we have, this is a great shot from the helicopter. Um, the uh, Channel 2 helicopter is, is doing an outstanding job. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful visual. But when you look at him, when we get back to the truck, you'll see that his head isn't moving up and down. See this? His head is, is dead flat. So what you really want to see is you're not having any bouncing. And especially later in the race, where you will have a tendency to, to change your form, his head is his head has maintained its stability all the way throughout. And this is someone who's had to work on his form all of his life. He may run under 31 minutes here. I think there's a very good chance he's going to run. And now he's made, that's the last kilometer. That's nine kilometers out of ten. And he's working his way down. He'll go right near that center line, I think. And, and so this last kilometer is about that three-minute mark. So he's going he's gonna to leave it there all here. There we go. Here. He will run as hard as he can to the finish line because he, he knows he's got it uh, nailed. And he can see the stadium now. He can see himself on, uh, on the camera, on the, on the big screen. And he's working his way over because there's just a little jog to the right here and immediately back to the left. And then it's straight on down to the end of the road to that six mile point. And then you make a little left hand turn for about 50 feet there. Now it's a straight away all the way down to the entrance to the stadium. And one of the things you'll see here is the, uh, the, the press truck who's off to his, his right is going to, uh, as he makes the next quick left turn before he comes into the stadium, and I'd like all of the people in here to give him a big round of applause. I'd all ten of you. <laughs> <laughs> we need everybody to help. This is a really, this is a strong effort if you look at it. Um, if you look at if, if you look at how he has has performed today, then he's going to uh, he will break the the uh, the time set in last year's race by a minute. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think this is easily going to be a time that's going to stand up against the elite field, I, and and good. I think maybe even top five, or or better. So last year's winner was 32.51, 32.51. So he aver and that was a 5.18 pace. So he's been more around f around five minute pace. So he's, he'll be almost nearly two minutes faster. Two minutes faster. 
And this is a beautiful part of the campus. You know, when we come through the, the Fort Collins CSU campus, it, it really is it, it really is spectacular. 2955. Through six miles. Through six miles. Now he's gonna make that little left hand turn and then the right hand turn to come down the entrance tunnel into the stadium. So when he makes this right hand turn, people let's give him let's give him the honor he deserves. He's coming through the tunnel. Bring it on. Come on, let's hear it for him. This is an outstanding race. Way to go. Andrew Epperson. Great job. Great job, Andrew. From gun to finish. Assistant coach here at Colorado State University. Form hasn't changed. Looks even faster now than he did in his fast mile of 4.53. He may break... 31. Go, Andrew. Great job, Andrew. He's gonna. Oh, I think he's just under. That's great. So that's 30 seconds so far since he finished. So he... Little drink of water, turn around. Let's bring these guys in, great job. Great job as they come through the stadium. This crowd, we can be raucous, come on guys. So that's Seth Woodring and Brandon White. It's going to be a battle here on the battle on the plastic. A100, that's uh, Michael Dreher's. Looks like he's suffering just a little bit with his head up. Number 110. Seth number Woodring held on to second. The entire way, Brandon White got ahead of him a little bit, but he came back. Great run. Good finish, good finish. About a minute and a half. 32-37. About 32-42. Joshua Murth. Good job, Joshua. Good job. Well done. As you can see, their momentum, their momentum pulls them out into the center of that. Number 93, Joshua Mirth. Great job. Great job. From Fort Collins, Colorado. Number 60, Daniel Craighead from Lafayette. Good job. Well done, Daniel. Number 60, Daniel Craighead, well done. Good job. Number 132 coming in shortly. Number 132 is going to be um, Jake Lucero from Castle Rock. One of last year's finishers. Yeah, Jake, uh, Jake Lucero from last year got seventh place last year. Ran a time of uh, 33.49. A little faster this year. Number 125. Number 125 is uh, Gourmet Tesfa. Gourmet Tesfa from Fresno, California. Number 55, he was one of, in that lead group, that's Ryan uh, Goldan from Grand Junction. Made the trip over. So we've got a race on the floor here. Race on the floor here. Number A1, uh, number 41, number 41. Um, don't have number 41's num name. Great effort. Number 102 coming in, that's Chaiwat. 
Eng Carl. Eng Chakul. Eng Chakul from Louisville. And it'll be a steady stream. We're going to stay with you here till we see the first woman come in. Got number 129. That's uh, 129 is Bradley Ziegler. Bradley Ziegler was one of our, our top guys from uh, last year. Um, Bradley was uh, 22nd last year. Who ran uh, first. 35 minutes. Oh, first woman, number 117. Number 117. Uh, number 117 is Soyo Nomura from Longmont. Soyo Nomura from Longmont. So we're going to let the music come up and let you enjoy the, uh, the festivities. And I would encourage you to go up and take part in the, uh, in the expo in the, on the concord above you. There's some great options, some great things to see. Have some fun. And uh, the pro race will be starting at, at 10.15. The first wave and the second and the last uh, the last runner will go at 10:22, and we look forward to that. Thank you very much, from Frank Shorter and Tim Cronin. We appreciate the whole, we appreciate the effort. Thanks.